welcome back. Today we'll be making a delicious plant-based meatloaf recipe. However, we're going to start by making our easy homemade ketchup recipe. Both recipes are 100% alkaline. Anyway, let's get started. Start by slicing 4-5 to five plum tomatoes into halves. When you're done, place them in a blender cup. Using a powerful blender, blend them until smooth. You don't need any water whatsoever. Next, pass it through a fine mesh strainer to strain out most of the liquid. Doing this will quicken the cooking process. Move it around to get things going and when you're done, you can follow the rest of the process I'm about to show you. An easier method is to use a store-bought tomato paste. But this isn't just any store-bought tomato paste. It's alkaline approved from what I've heard. Now it's also in a glass jar and it's 100% organic. So if you don't have a problem with it, go ahead and use it. Scoop the contents of the jar into a bowl. If you're using blended plum tomatoes, go ahead and add all of the ingredients I'm about to add. Add some sea salt to taste, then add 1 tablespoon of granulated onions. For sweetness, add 2 to 4 tablespoons of agave syrup. Finally, squeeze in the juice of about 2 to 3 key limes. Next, we're going to give it a really good mix and we should be ready to go. This is an alkaline recipe, so I skipped all of the ingredients people live in the alkaline lifestyle don't eat. You can tailor yours to your liking. Add your tomato paste to a saucepan set to medium heat. Rinse off the bowl with about a quarter cup of water and add it to the saucepan. Give it a thorough mix. Now let this cook for about an hour uncovered while mixing occasionally. After one hour, reduce your heat to a simmer, cover and let it cook for another hour. There are several ways to make homemade ketchup, but this is my preferred alkaline recipe. After two hours, your ketchup should be ready. Take it off the stove and let it cool down thoroughly. Let's make our ground beef replacement. You gain some king oyster or king trumpet mushrooms. Lay your mushroom on its side and cut it into smaller cylindrical pieces. Set them aside for now. Slice some large portobello mushrooms into smaller pieces and when you're done, you can set them aside. I cut my mushrooms into smaller pieces so they can fit into my food processor. Add your king oyster mushroom pieces into a food processor and give it a couple pulses. You don't want your mushroom slices to be too tiny because they will still shrink after cooking. Once you've broken down your mushrooms, add them to a large bowl. You want them to look something like this. Next, we're going to do the same thing with our portobello mushrooms. Pour them over your king oyster mushroom pieces. Using my hands, I'm going to give this a thorough mix. When you taste this, you'll be making your ground beef replacement using this method going forward. Next, I'll grab a handful of my ground mushrooms and I'll give it a really good squeeze over a strainer placed on a bowl. Squeeze out as much water as you can get out, then place your mushrooms back in a separate bowl. I've told you from the earlier stages of this channel, mushroom stock will always be one of your best plant-based stocks. Anyway, once you've squeezed out most of the water from your mushrooms, you can proceed to the next step, which is cooking it. Place a large cast iron pan on a stove set to medium high heat. Once your pan is hot, go ahead and add your shredded mushrooms. Spread your mushrooms around so they can cook evenly. While cooking, you'll notice a lot of steam. That's okay, it's just the remaining water evaporating. Let this cook undisturbed for 5 minutes. While that's cooking, you can go ahead and blend some fresh or dried basil, some plum tomatoes and an onion. If you want to, you can also use some alkaline approved store-bought tomato sauce. Back to the mushrooms. Give it a good mix and let it cook undisturbed for another 5 minutes. Repeat the process one more time and you should be good. In total, you want to let it cook for about 15 minutes. You could go more if you want. After 15 minutes, go ahead and add about a quarter cup of avocado oil, then give it a good mix. Add about one and a half to two cups of your tomato sauce. Mix it all together while scraping any stuck on bits of mushrooms from the bottom of the pan. My ground beef replacement recipe is a really good recipe and I've used it a couple times and it never failed me. Anyway, it's time to add our herbs and spices and you can add and remove anything you want to suit your taste.
we're going to be starting with some dried oregano. Add about one tablespoon. Next, you want to add a quarter teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon. This is optional, but you can go ahead and add a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. For a little bit more boost in the onion flavor, I'm adding one tablespoon of granulated onions. Add some sea salt and adjust the taste. Next, you want to add about two tablespoons of ground coriander seeds. This is optional, but you can add some cayenne pepper for heat. Add a tablespoon of winter savory. If you can't find it, just skip it. Add a quarter teaspoon of dried dill. Then finally, add a teaspoon of dried thyme. Add about a quarter cup of your mushroom stock, then give it a good mix. Alright, you can go ahead and turn your stove down to medium heat. Let this cook for about 15 minutes while stirring occasionally. After 15 minutes, go ahead and taste it, make final adjustments and take it off the stove. We're not done yet. We're going to make our bechamel sauce. This is a heavy cheese-like sauce made from flour. Place a saucepan on medium heat. To the saucepan, you want to add about half a cup of avocado oil. Some people use butter or ghee, but alkaline vegans don't eat either of those things. Once your oil is hot, go ahead and add two cups of an alkaline approved flour. I know it shows one cup, but I adjusted it to two cups later on. Immediately start whisking it together vigorously. Be careful so you don't scald yourself, but once it starts to come together, you can go ahead and add two cups of milk a little at a time. Whatever you do, don't stop whisking. If you have someone to help you, go ahead and ask for help. Once you've slowly incorporated all of your milk while whisking, your sauce should begin to look very smooth. People living the alkaline lifestyle don't eat eggs, so I'm replacing eggs with chickpea water. Add one cup of chickpea water and some sea salt to taste, then keep whisking vigorously. Keep whisking until you get a silky smooth sauce. You want it to be a little runny and to look something like this. Traditionally, it should be free of lumps. Mine has a couple lumps, but that's okay. Into your ground beef replacement, you want to add about half a cup of your bechamel sauce. Once you're done, give it a really good mix to combine. This will further thicken the ground meat replacement. Check out how thick our ground meat replacement is. Beautiful. Let's add some fresh herbs. We're going to add two sprigs of fresh sage and two sprigs of fresh basil. These will give your meatloaf a delicious aroma. Pluck your basil leaves, then go ahead and slice and chop them into smaller pieces. Repeat the process for your fresh sage leaves. Add them to your ground meat replacement. Mix it thoroughly to ensure the fresh herbs are spread out uniformly. Next, we're going to go ahead and add a quarter to half a cup of chickpea flour. Chickpea flour will further thicken the mixture so it holds its shape when molded. Next, add a quarter cup of mushroom water. This is from the mushrooms we squeezed earlier. Give the final thorough mix and we can move on to the next step. Yes, I know you can pre-mix the chickpea flour and the mushroom water, but it's such a small quantity that it doesn't matter. This is a 6x10x3.5 by by inch ceramic baking dish. It's oven safe and it's alkaline friendly. Make sure you oil the insides of your baking dish thoroughly. Scoop out your ground meat replacement and fill up your baking dish to the brim. After baking, your mushroom meatloaf is going to shrink a little, so make sure you fill it up. Using a spatula, spread and flatten the surface of your meat replacement until it's evenly aligned with the top edges of your baking dish. Don't forget to wipe down the edges of your baking dish. Give it a light tap to reduce air bubbles. Once you're done, it should look something like this. We're almost done, so hang in there. Bake this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. After baking for one hour, let it cool down thoroughly. If possible, overnight in the refrigerator. The next morning, or after four to eight hours of cooling, you can flip it onto a baking tray. Now, if you don't oil the insides of your baking dish, this would be a fairly difficult task. 
beat the top of your baking dish like your Nikana audition for drumline. Then lift and be ready for all the oohs and ahs. This looks so good, I almost quit the next step. You can actually hit this up and eat it as is, but this is grubbiny and we like to push it to the limit. If you're not a grubbiny soldier and you don't feel like forging ahead, go ahead and slice, heat up and enjoy. If you're a grubbiny soldier, scoop and add two to four tablespoons of our homemade ketchup over the top of your meatloaf. Just a reminder to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying this video. Thank you. Once you've added your ketchup, go ahead and brush it all over the top and the sides of your mushroom meatloaf. Bake this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. After baking, add and brush 2 tablespoons of ketchup over the top of your mushroom meatloaf. Go ahead and slice yourself the largest portion, then slice smaller portions for your family and friends. <laughs> This recipe is way easier to make than it looks. It's only time consuming, but since it's for the holidays, you should have the time to make it. You can serve this with some scoops of my mashed burro bananas. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and watch it. If you're vegan, you can use some mashed potatoes. If you feel like it, you can use the back of your spoon to press down on your mashed puro bananas or mashed potatoes to form holding bowls. The holding bowls will be, of course, for your gravy. If you haven't seen my video, please go ahead and watch it. Pour some of my alkaline gravy into your puro banana holding bowls. I tried to make a smiley face, but nah, it didn't work. So that's what it looks like on the inside and as you can see it's holding together it's not falling apart and it's very delicious the inside is not dry it's moist and perfectly cooked thanks again for watching this video if you enjoyed it don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to grubbany i'll see you all next week